Hello and welcome back to the precipice of delusion. I'm your host, Julian Gavilanis. Shit, guys. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to another episode where we dive into the trials and tribulations of being an artist, what it means to traverse through the crazy old jungles of the psychological warfare that takes shape when you are just trying to make some art, you know, all the things that, uh, try to push you away, but what pushes you towards it? What keeps you going? What keeps you motivated and inspired and how you stay in a good space with your heart and your self-worth and your uh, self-love? More importantly than anything, it's been um, it's been a tough couple of weeks for me. If I'm being honest, I uh, I got really sick early on, and it's kind of just been with me for the last couple of weeks. Um, and I've been doing a lot. I've just been like really doing a lot and really trying to also, um, you know, take rests when I need to. Like I'm trying to practice all the things I need to do in order to have a well-balanced, you know, work-life balance. And, um, I'm not saying that I'm doing it right by any means. I can't imagine that I am, but you know, I'm in therapy right now and, you know, I am talking through so many different things and man, I just really don't know what it's going to take for me to stop thinking that the more I do, the better I'm going to feel about myself. Um, it really does provide a sense of value to me when I'm able to get things done and I like that about myself to a certain degree, but I also, you know, just really wish that I could accept that I am enough and doing all right. Um, and ultimately I'm fine. Like I have a lot of gratitude. I'm, you know, this is all by design. This, these are champagne problems, but you know, problems nonetheless, and I'm facing them and this is my podcast. So I get to talk about whatever the hell I want. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's tricky. And I think this podcast has been a really wonderful space for me to uh, express myself in this regard and, and talk to other people who are kind of maybe feeling the same way. And, you know, the comments and the reviews and the people that have been shooting me messages have been so warm and, uh, and kind and, uh, and it's just wonderful, you know, it's just so lovely to receive all those messages of love and support about what's going on here. I don't want this to ever come across like, oh, I'm an artist and things are so hard and God, like this life is just so tragic. It's like, you know, no, it's, yes, it can be that. And it can also be just a beautiful, you know, mess. And I think that's more of it than anything. And I don't ever want this to come across, um, in a way that feels complainy or, uh, you know, me just like nagging on what I am so lucky to be able to do. So yeah, you know, it's been, it's been a tough time. I just got a massage and, you know, I'm sniffling my way through the whole entire thing and trying to take care of myself as best as I can. But you know, these days just, they keep coming and, uh, I don't always feel like the work that I'm putting out into the world is uh, being reciprocated. Like everything that I'm putting out isn't being reciprocated as much as I would hope. And I imagine that's a relatable feeling to so many people. You know, we work our asses off and what do we really get back? And guys, I have a really epic guest on today. I think this episode is a perfect representation of what this show is all about. My good pal Spencer Granice is an actor. I'm sure you've probably seen him at some point if you watch enough TV. He's on a lot of stuff. And if you saw a picture of him, you'd be like, yeah, I know that guy. I definitely know that guy. He's truly a remarkable actor and does just 
such stellar work in everything that he does. You've probably seen him from anything to like Fear the Walking Dead or the Pam and Tommy show that was happening for a little while, that miniseries, uh, FBI International, the Mayans, uh, uh, mo- most notably and most recently, he was uh, a really incredible character on Barry, the Bill Hader show named Bevel in the third season where he plays this fucking best character of all time. Uh, if you haven't caught up on that show, I implore you to do it because uh, not only is the show incredible, but Spencer is just (laughs) amazing. And I really loved getting to talk to him. He has been just like ascending in this business. Since I met him, he was living out here in New York for um, 10 years. And we were going out for a lot of the same things. And we became kind of like audition rivals for a little while. And then, uh, which is funny because we're we like are very far from like each other's types, but sure enough, we uh, we commiserated over a, a missed opportunity that both of us didn't get, and became friends through it, and kind of like have been rooting for each other ever since. He has gone on to do really wonderful things with his career. Um, he now lives in L.A. and is just killing it. He's in all sorts of cool projects. Um, I really do believe that this guy is going to do incredible things with his career as an actor and as a filmmaker, as he steps into that. Um, I got all the love in the world for this guy. He is humble. He is generous. He is uh, thoughtful. He is smart. Um, and uh, yeah, he's just a, a really cool friend and I'm, I'm proud to know him. He's, he's uh, going to be a, uh, a really important figure in the in the film space one of these days and i'm excited to call it right here right now so ladies and gentlemen without further ado please welcome my guest spencer granice so interesting man like you're you're such a fascinating subject for me because you know i like as i was thinking about talking with you i was kind of like reminiscing on how i even know you to begin with and i was remembering that you and i had gone in for like the same part which is strange because we have nothing alike but like whatever it is what it is and uh on that show high town and we had like gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then we, neither of us got it. Yeah. And we were like kind of commiserating over the fact that like we like met each other through like the, the discovery of who did actually get the role. And then we were like, I think I maybe reached out to you or something. It was just like, I don't know. I don't know how it even happened, but um, it was something like that for sure. Something like that. And yeah, we went and like had coffee and, and sat down and just kind of like chatted about probably something that we're going to chat about today again, you know, which is like, how are you finding your way through this when like, you know, those feelings of, it's not even rejection. It's like, you're actually close. Like you're, 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 you're reaching a point in your, in your career as an actor of like actually touching the thing that you're, that you're aiming for. And And then the rug gets pulled out from under you and you're just like, oh, this is fucking devastating, but it's also just like part of it, a part of the part of the thing. And it's not only to be expected, but at some point you have to learn how to like appreciate that part of it. Yeah. And for me, it's been a really hard thing to try and like get to in my own journey Hence, you know, why I'm starting this podcast to try to like talk to my actor friends and and artist friends, musicians, whoever all alike, and just see like, you know, where, where does that like perseverance and that drive like come from? Is it like, is it from the booking itself? Is it from like the validation or is it like an obsession? Is it a mental health disorder? Like all All, the above? All the above. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, I think it's important. The bookings and the validation, those kind of go hand in hand in the same pocket, I think, where, you know, that's helped me, right? So you get booking, you, you book jobs and you're like, oh, shit, people want to put me in their stuff. That means like, I guess something, I have something to offer here, you know? Mm-hmm. And 
And then kind of on a higher level, at least for me, validation from people you admire, people you respect, uh, that has been a huge thing for me um, to like, just keep going forward regardless of what happens, you know, like. um, I think I need, I think I like want you to, I want to hear that story from you. Like we can go all over the place here, but like, if you're willing to share, like you, you got cast in uh what's the name of the movie uh boys, boys in the boat, boat. yeah, yeah the george can, clooney i can cliff notes it for you okay I, cool yeah like, yeah i'm sure it's know, devastating and hard that you can bring back up yeah well it's not even that so much it's like i've made my peace with it mm. and like a while ago honestly sure. um it, it's more so just uh it's trying to cut out certain details and stuff i don't feel yeah yeah no i got it but basically, like, yeah, I was cast. I auditioned for the lead of the movie. I knew I was going to get that. And then two months later, I found out from my agent that I got pinned for another role for one of the other guys in the boat. I didn't know who um, without another tape or anything. And they said that George just pinned me for that. And then, like, a week or two after that, they said he wanted to meet with me. I Zoomed with him. It was great, you know, great meeting. It was really cool. Um you know, he, he was very uh, kind and said really, you know, um, like I said, validating things, I guess, uh, about my work. And um, yeah, and then I got the job like a month later and had it for two months. And then basically costume asked for a photo of me without a shirt for a photo double. And then that got brought to studio and the studio was saying that they weren't aware of how um, heavily tattooed I was and didn't know and uh, said it wasn't time and cost effective. And um, yeah, so ultimately they recast me in the role over the weekend. Um, and uh, yeah, it feels weird sharing it because it's like I've told so many people in my personal life and stuff like that. And there's a part of me that feels but the, that's the point of this podcast is to like talk about these things right so trying to be like i've done other podcasts where i'm like i'm just gonna like kind of mention that brush over it but i think Mm. this is kind of the the uh focus of what you're doing here right so i mean yeah i certainly appreciate it and i you know by no means you know want to like push you out of your comfort zone if you're if you're not but yeah you know this is very much about like it, whatever it's it's subject to each individual right like who mm-hmm. who has these experiences and goes through them and really like how do you get on the opposite side of that experience and feel okay and feel like i can keep doing this because it, it's gonna happen again because it's happened oh, again it's, it's already happened again you know it happened <laughs> yeah, again yeah. And, and i don't really want to go into that but it's it's sure. it's something that i'm just learning like yeah, man, like this is just something that happens. And I, I kind of reached out. It happened again recently for a different reason. And I was like, okay. And I, like I reached out to some friends that I know that are like successful actors. They've been in this for a long time or they just had a lot of success. And and all of them are like, yeah, it's like things just fall apart. Like it's just part of it now. Like it's just like once you get to a certain place, it's like shit falls apart, get recast. Like it's just uh, there's more responsibility on mm-hmm. your shoulders for these parts. So they're going to be a lot more, uh, they're hard, harder to, uh, hold on to. Yeah. And, um, and, and maintain and, and to even get them. Yeah. So I think with this last one, it, it, something just like clicked for me where I'm just like, Oh, that, that first thing wasn't like, just like that never happens. That's, or that's just like a fluke and it's never going to happen again. It's like, Oh, this is just like part of it now. And having that information and that knowledge of being like, to go forward and be like, okay, this could fall apart. This could, you know, I could be recast. Like the shit just happens, you know? Does it feel personal right at the top of the experience or are you able to kind of detach from that and just like really recognize that it's not that at all? I can detach from it. I think initially it's hard for any human to not take it a little personally, especially if it's like, like with the other one, it was my tattoos. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't even take it personally. I was like, that's just who I am. And I, you, yeah. you had your time to look and see what my body looked like and what, you know, who I was. And yeah, um, that was just based on due diligence, I think. But uh, I don't really take it personally. When I found out about this last one, I was like, you know, I was bummed, but I was, it was ultimately came down to um, 
creative decision and, and the dynamic and someone dropping out that was part of my group and it just shifted things and i'm like what can you do like literally yeah. what, what can you do it's just like and, and and i don't know where the the wherewithal like the artificial wherewithal comes from i think it's like i don't know man it's like the only thing i've never really like given up on uh in my life and um i just feel this like endless uh battery for it like it gets it gets drained but like somehow i'll find a recharge and it's like and it doesn't even take that much you know like um and it's all about you know uh kind of like shifting your dynamic with with the business and your energy towards yourself and towards others and you know all that kind of like spiritual you know inner work that you should do um which I, I, I fight with sometimes because uh, I look at it like, well, Philip Seymour Hoffman was a fucking, he was, you know, seemed like he had a lot of demons. Robert Downey Jr. had a lot of demons, like all these people who were very successful. And I'm like, I don't think you have to be like zenned out and so like all positive energy. But I think that's kind of what's helping me and where I'm leaning into, especially as I get older. I'm just like um, connecting more with, uh, I don't know. It's going to sound so like, oh, he just moved to L.A. a couple of years ago. But like, <laughs> it's really, I don't know, it's infiltrated my brain in a way that uh, good. I'm welcoming it, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you like have faith that you are going to do what you are going to do r- despite like the work or like the wherewithal of knowing like how you're going to do it? You just kind of know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. I don't fucking have that. <laughs> I mean, it's, you get it's that. I don't know how, I don't know where it comes from, bro. Like, it's like, ever since I've started, no one has started to be like when I was, I mean, I didn't start acting until I was 30, you know? And yeah, like, I know. And I, and when I started, I was just, I've always had this, like, you know, belief, this faith that, like, I believe in myself so much and, like, this is what I've wanted to do since I was five years old. And I put it off for, I never did any acting until like mm-hmm. late, late twenties into 30, when I started really pursuing, pursuing it full, yeah. like full time, you know? And, and um, yeah, man, I, I don't know where it, I don't know where it comes from. Has, I, has it evolved or is that like a learned behavior? Or is it just like something like intrinsically, well, like it rooted inside you? I think it's innate. I think it is. I think, but I also think that all those those things that we're talking about, like the work, getting work, or the validation from people that hearing things that I, it just makes me be like, I'm on the right path. Yeah. That person said that shit to me. They didn't need to say that shit to me. I'm on the right path here, you know. Yeah. And that's how I choose to look at it. That's that's. I I think that, and it feels right. It feels right in my gut. And I'm I, I'm a I'm someone who operates on heavily on on intuition and. In all facets yeah. facets of life and yeah um, yeah i'm sure it, i'm sure it contributes to your work for sure and like you're i mean you're you're a really good actor man like i'll just say that straight out like i've watched your work some of it at least and and it's awesome man like you're you're you do something uniquely your own and it is really like lived in and honest and like instinctual yeah. and it's cool to see um Thank it's you. not just like another accessory to a TV show playing a role or a film. Like it's, it's like you're, you're in that space and you're like occupying that, that role. I don't want to be that, you know, I never want to be that. That's not why I got into it. And sometimes you have to, right? Like it's starting sure. out. You're like, well, I'll take this and I'll take this. For sure. And now I, yeah, I was, I'll say, I'll say, I was like, I'm now I'm really picky, but after the pandemic and strike and all that stuff, I'm like less, I'm becoming less picky. Cause I'm like, well, I just want to work and I need to pay bills and right. you know, that kind of thing. So, right. I, I, yeah. It gets really challenging. And, and, and I, and I take back saying that I don't have faith in myself, you know, like, but yeah. it, but it changes and it goes and it's kind of like, again, the, 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 the catalyst for, for this conversation, this podcast is, is that like my faith is elevated with validation. So like, let's say like I book something and then I'm like, Oh Yeah. Now I have more faith in myself. Now I have more faith that this is working out. But then like that thing goes away or stops. It doesn't go away. It's always going to be with me. I'm going to have all of my experiences for the rest of my life. Yeah. But they, they end and I'm kind of like 
in this space of, well, that thing didn't necessarily like propel me to the next thing as the way that I kind of thought it might. And when that didn't happen, it's like, okay, well, let me manage my expectations. And then inside that managing of my own expectations and being like, well, I just need, I want to be an artist, but like now I'm just needing to be an actor for hire if I can even be that. And, and then you get to a place where you're like, I can't even be that. And so Mm -hmm. you're like, well, what's my fucking worth? Like, what am I doing? What, how, how, like, what I thought I was way up here just like a few days ago. And now I'm like down here and I'm trying to kind of like, grasp a hold of this like this peak and valley kind of like experience that I'm having and continue to like have that faith be at the same place that it was just a few days ago when I was doing that but I'm trying my best not to like attach the two things to each other like it like yeah. it's yeah it's just like where do you, how can you just like live with that in you all the time and not it's a, uh, it's it's not possible I, I think I, I... I think that what's been a big part of my journey recently is finding purpose outside of it, uh, finding some reason, like, because I made it all about just work and acting. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm not worth anything. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, artists in general, just struggle with that, that, you know, but... um, you Like, I, I, I feel like you've had a very, like, grassroots experience with your whole journey like you you, you uh, correct me if i'm wrong but like you're not coming from nepotism or you're not coming from like you don't have people in this in this world at all you're like a you're like a heavy metal dude like that came from like music and stuff right kind of partially yeah um and just kind of landed in acting and it kind of started working for you but you've definitely like climbed the ladder yeah like you have been like you did your 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 small roles into the, your bigger roles into your bigger roles into your bigger roles and you've 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 earned your stripes so to speak um does it feel like it's moved fast or does it feel like it's gone at like a snail speed? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I mean, this is my 10th year doing it now and um, it feels, yeah, it feels slow. And when I talk to people that have been in this business for a long time, they're like, and they hear that, they go, no, 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 no. you're doing fine. That's 10, yeah. like you're, that's, you're doing real well for what's yeah. going on right now, you know? Um, yeah. Are you able to accept that? Yeah, I think I am. I think... Honestly, I really uh, um, f- uh, not thrive, but like um, I really take in when people say things like that to me. Um, I really listen to what people say to me and especially people that uh, I know have had more experience or, you know, um, they're coming from, from a place where they're telling me something and they're, they definitely wouldn't, they do not need to say that to me, you know, and um that helps, I guess. I don't know. I, uh, you said you started 10 years ago and you, that was, you started at like the age of 30 and like, did you, did you kind of like happen into it or did you like have an intention that like you knew where you were going with acting and you like had a goal and a vision for what you wanted to do? I've been building the vision since I was five years old. So like I knew when I was five, I wanted to be an actor. I knew it. I just like remember watching the first thing that I can say, and I think I've, I've shared this before somewhere on another podcast, but I, the first movie I remember seeing, like that stuck with me, was the first movie I saw in the movie theater, which was mm-hmm. the first Ninja Turtles movie. And mm-hmm. Sam Rockwell had a small part in that, a couple scenes. He was playing like this head thug guy at yeah. first, Shredder's, you know, gang. And I remember seeing Sam Rockwell in that part when I was six and just being like, I want to do that. And, and then, I, and then it would just be like, I was obsessed with movies. I was obsessed with actors. One of my, my favorite books I had in fourth grade was Roger Ebert's top 500 movie reviews. And it was like this oh, cool. fucking book of just like his reviews with cast listings and like why a movie was rated. It was for like, you know, the content it had in it. And like, I was obsessed. And, um, And I, I, deep down, like I always wanted to do it, but I didn't believe in myself then. And I didn't have anybody pushing me to believe in myself. So that's why you didn't get started. You just didn't have the wherewithal yeah, and the the belief really. Totally. You didn't have the delusion. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of uh, stunned that you, you pulled out Sam Rockwell from the Ninja Turtles because that, because it probably, he wasn't. 
a big star at that point. Yeah. I can't imagine. That's one of the first things he did. <laughs> yeah. And you like saw that and that was what you kind of wanted. And, and then you, you, oh yeah, you were, you didn't believe that you could. And yes. so I didn't. you didn't, you didn't like pursue it. I didn't, yeah. you know, and then I was like, I was a good kid. Like uh, not good, I had good, like I was a good student in like uh, first through fifth grade. And then sixth grade came around and I started getting into like punk rock and skateboarding and Mm-hmm. You know, weed and shit. And I was yeah. like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go live this life. That's, that's, that's what's for me. And yeah. like, I remember being in, um, in, uh, high school it was probably like eighth grade or something, ninth, ninth grade. Um, and someone that knew that I loved like movies and like actors and stuff. was like, there's have like, it was like drama school, like a class or whatever, like tryouts or some shit. And I was like, nah it's just for fucking nerds like that like in my head that's what i was like outwardly saying but inside i was like oh but i probably would love to do that but i was just like that's i'm just never gonna do it you know it's just a pipe dream forever and um yeah and then i had lived my life and went through many different lives uh and a lot of experiences and then um yeah man it just i one day it clicked for me uh I, i i was gonna um working crew i was like that was i was like acting's not gonna happen i was working in bartending in florida and i was like that's not gonna happen so why don't i move to new york and work in crew and see if what i if i love something there and uh i worked in crew for like fuck almost two years doing um, a lot like pa i started pa i did yeah, locations did art department uh helped out with costume for a bit and then it was ading oh, and wow. i was like nope I got to go back to bartending. It's acting. It's always been, I got to fucking try. And, um, and then I just left it all like that world. And then I went back to bartending and lost so many bar jobs. Cause I would be like, I have to go to this audition. They're like, we don't care. And I'd be like, well then I quit. And then I would get evicted from my apartment cause I couldn't pay rent. And like, and I made a lot of sacrifices for it, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah. And then somehow, man, I don't know. Like I've had a, you learn the business and I will say the business is like a whole other monster. You have to understand and learn, like find your forward momentum, I think, and like having the right team and all that shit. I mean, I've been through, you know, many agents and a few managers like in my time. And, um, I just think, uh, I always had a clear vision of like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it with the mindset of being one of like, the, like a great actor. I'm not going in this to be like, I want to be on TV. I just want to be on this show. I'm going into this to be like, to be like Sam Rockwell or yeah. River Phoenix or Gary Oldman. And like, those are like my heroes yeah. uh, from my like adolescent. Yeah. Age stuff, yeah. You, you know? have to, man, you have yeah. to, but you like, but you can't manufacture that belief either. You can't be like, Oh, I'm like, you know, I, that's what I want. That's what I, you have to like really buy into that. Yeah. And, and, and practice your fucking dick off yeah. and like, keep like, okay, prove it, you know, like, of course I do. Of course yeah. that sounds appealing. So like, yep. how do I go through that? And what's interesting is, you know, like, I think, I think like the early stages of, of somebody's career is so indicative of how they like lean into their later professional life Mm. for like for you how you're able to tolerate kind of some of these like lows or some of these like highs and lows that you're going through uh it it kind of comes from having like you know lost jobs and and lost been evicted and been like sacrificed everything in the beginning it's like dude i fucking went through i was living in hell for a decade you know like or however long it was to try and like build this thing so now that i have it these new problems yeah they're they're fucking harsh and they're shitty to have to try to like accept yeah. but i've been through these things already and i think it get, like it just is so fucking character building to have to go through that and i'm not sure that everybody has to i think like if you're coming from a place of like doing this on your own yeah. and you don't have you know wealthy parents that put you through to yale or columbia drama school and like you don't get some like you know agency showcase right out of school at juilliard and you don't get some big agents and go start immediately auditioning for fucking dune or whatever the fuck it might be like yeah. you have to really like 
go at it at like a snail speed and just like chip away and chip away and chip away and be fucking evicted. It's like literally a rite of passage to like be fucked <laughs> like yeah. with nothing. Totally. And what's crazy though, man, is because like you don't think like what I'm learning from talking to so many people is that like it's it, it like it doesn't get better with growth. It gets different and that different sometimes like like no you're not broke anymore you can pay your rent you have nice things you can let you like you know can you can do the things that you didn't do back then but yeah. that's almost like the anxiety and the pressure and the stress it's almost weighs more yeah and like yeah, for sure and does it does it just keep happening that way or like you have to like align your mindset like how do people at the top go I through this know. i don't know man like i I do think it's an alignment thing. Like that's where I, right now, like just at a personal level, like I'm trying to align myself differently with energy in the universe. Around. Yeah, dude, it's so good, I, man. I mean, it's I good. I really am because I think uh, there's something in that. Um, but I don't, oh, man, it does get harder. I, I've noticed, I mean, it just gets heavier. It's harder. There's more responsibility. There's more, you know, there's more at stake. The stakes are just higher. So, you know, um, the loss can be greater. The, you know, the heartache can be harder. Are you scared um, of getting bigger at all? Yes. I don't ever want to be f like famous. famous. I'm not after fame. Fame scares the shit out of me. Like, I, I don't like, you not know. Everybody asks for it though, man. I know that. I know that. And I'm, you know, it's something that I've signed up for if that were to ever happen. Right. Mm -hmm. But I guess in my head, like my, like the sweet spot, the ideal spot is to be respected and known in the industry, like the, the guys who I mentioned mm -hmm. and not so much a household name. Uh, but someone sees, they go, Oh, that, that guy, that guy's great. He's like, he's so sick in this or something like mm -hmm. that's kind of like my, dream spot. I don't really give it. I don't want, you know, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't want a lot of people to just know, uh, who I am. Um, yeah. I just care about the industry more than anything, honestly. Yeah. And people within my industry. And, and, um, that's, that's, that's kind of what I want it to be. And mm -hmm. as you said, you can't choose it, but, um, so I strive for. Yeah. It's the hard part of being an actor is that you don't really get to like I mean, to a certain degree, yes, you're, you can start like choosing and having like this, you know, discernment towards like where you direct your st yourself, but like, mm -hmm. you're not really designing your path so much. Like things happen. Like I remember Matt Damon saying like, you know, post Goodwill hunting fame, he was like, fame is a weird thing. Like I, I, I'm the same person. It's just everybody else around you changes, you know? So like you're you wake up the same the next morning, the same fucking dude. It's just mm -hmm. like you go out to get your coffee and all of a sudden people are like looking out there. It's like, it's a strange thing. And so yeah. you, he didn't know, he didn't have that in mind. He wasn't prepared for that. And you won't be prepared for that either. It's a byproduct of the thing that you go out and do. You know, I'm sure you already have people that recognize you for certain things that you have already done. Yeah. And it might be like, I don't know, you know, I've talked to some people who are like, still like behind the bar after having done like full, you know, series of shows. And they're just like, dude, aren't you that one guy from that one thing? And it's just like, you know, I thought it was going to be really hard for me to deal with that. Cause I was like behind the bar and ultimately, you know, you just have to fucking accept and be like, yeah, you know, that was me. And then they're like, that was really cool, man. I really like that. Like, you know, thank you for being great. And he's just like, Oh, I guess this, this isn't like my worst nightmare. It's fine. Like people are yeah. still cool. And, yeah. I don't know, man. It's just like, cause, because you can't design it as an actor as much as you could, if you were like a filmmaker per se, mm -hmm. would you, are you like interested in kind of like directing yourself in that regard? Or are you kind of just like leaning into like, I am going to act and I'm going to get jobs and I'm going to keep like moving myself in this direction until I get to where I want to be as an actor. That's kind of what it has been for a while is that I want, I'm like, Oh, I want to establish myself this way. I want to be more established as an actor. And then, and then it'll be easier to make things or whatever, which right now in this industry right now, it's not easy to make things for fucking anybody. Yeah. Right. But, um, I, 
Yeah, man. I, I, I think it's changed a bit for me um, where uh, I've started to like finally um, start outlining and writing a little bit of this feature that I've had off based off of short for a long time. And it's like finally kind of coming out of me. And I was like, I'm a person who works like I'll push for things. And like, when it comes to career, I advocate for myself and all that kind of stuff. But I, in my, in life in general, I like things to just kind of unfold organically. And, um, in my head, I was like, I know it's going to come to me. I'm not going to force it for years, years and years. I'm like, I don't know what the feature is, but I'll find it. And like, it'll hit me one day. And, uh, it hit me recently and I was like, there it is. Okay. Now let's move with it. And like, and I have plans to direct it and like plans to be in it and like, just take on that whole thing. And like, cause I believe that I can, like, I really, it scares me. Yes. It sounds like it could be, um, an absolute nightmare a lot of the times, but, um, I feel like sometimes nightmares can keep, make us feel alive. So I'm like. I really, I want to run towards it. And I want to, uh, I really want to do that. And I was talking to somebody, actually, I met, I ran into a friend's uh, uh, boyfriend that I know, and he was um, an EP and a writer on, uh, on a huge like Showtime show for years. Right. And we were just talking about, you know, he's starting to pitch around town and everything. And, um, and then I was telling him, he was like, he asked me, he was like, do you write? And remember? I was like, uh, yeah, I do. Like I, I haven't in a while, but, and then I simply just started talking and then it came out, like I told him the idea and he was like, it's like the validation thing, man. Like this guy is a writer. He's done a lot of stuff. And he was like, you're onto something. He's like, I don't say that to much of anyone. He's like, you're yeah. really onto something here. So he's like, if you want to send me, send me, you know, any stuff and I can help you or advice or whatever. And I'm nice. like, and I took that, just that meeting as like a, I gotta do it. Yeah. I gotta fucking get this done. You know, that's um, the difference, man. That's the difference between like the people who do and the people who don't is just like taking that one little fucking granule of, of, of something of anything and being like, okay, that's all I need. Like just, yeah. just anything, like anything to make me believe that like, this is worth something. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I feel like especially now, like post pandemic, you know, the strike has just felt like almost like an extension of the pandemic. Honestly, yeah. like for me, my whole career as an actor has felt pretty much like at nowhere since the pandemic, like as a professional, like, it, like actor that's moving through like the agency circuit and like moving into television, film, all that stuff. Yeah. And so I've really like leaned into so many other things, not because I'm not wanting to do that. It just yeah. like, I can't rely on it anymore. Like I can't sit back and wait to like get a call or like to get an audition, an opportunity to like maybe get something. Totally. And so that's really um, motivated me into different lanes of this, of this business and trying to start making my own movies, my own projects. And, yeah. you know, it's, what's funny is like, great you know people always say like make your own stuff make your own stuff you're like sweet man like yeah easier fucking said than done yeah dude. like no, i just made that. a movie <laughs> you know what that takes like yeah. in this you can be like you can do an iphone and all that's like but that's not how i want to make this movie exactly like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, i get what people are saying it's just uh, my vision doesn't align with for sure just make your own shit and get your friends and get an iphone and it's right. like right. okay yeah, For sure. dude. And I even had the same thing. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I know I can do this. I'm going to prove to myself that I can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I found myself like in actual pitch meetings with like big time investors who had a lot of money. And I was yeah. sitting there trying to pitch them on giving me like millions of dollars. And I was like, and they were like, dude, like, like they're taking the meeting with me because they like know somebody that knows me and, you know, out of the kindness of their hearts and right. real quickly, I'm realizing, oh, they're just taking this meeting out of the kindness of their hearts because yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. And, you know, eventually it's like, okay, cool. Like I kind of shot that in the foot, not necessarily like I just wasn't prepared for that. And I had to pull back and be like, okay, instead of this feature, I'm going to make this like proof of concept and then use that proof of concept as a tool to pitch for the feature. It's like all of these things. So you're like, okay, cool. The the proof of concept is going to be super easy. Then like, that's going to be like very easy, bro. It was so fucking hard. Like, like it's all so difficult and you know, it's great because you realize 
okay, cool. Like I'm in control here. I can direct now my own performance. I can direct my career. I can like put, I can put myself in a different category rather than like waiting for a role that speaks to me to like just come and, and like start working. Now I can like write this into existence. And so you're like, cool, like that is liberating. There's control involved in that. I feel like I am creatively in control of this thing. Yeah. But like, it's 150 times harder than just like waiting for a job. Like you realize acting like by all means is a difficult job to pull off well. Yeah. But like when you when you start to like do all of the other things, you're like, oh my God acting is like the fucking like last thing <laughs> that's necessary for like making yeah. this thing actually happen. And it really gives you an appreciation for the whole, you know, model of film and television and on camera work theater even as well. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm pumped that you're like putting your energy into that direction. I feel like because you're, you're like, and I'm sure you have a very different perspective on it, but like your trajectory seems to be going like, at the right speed, like at the speed that I'm like, um, oh. and I, and of course you see people like at a level above you that you're like, ah, oh, like yeah. why can't there's look, there's looks better. And then you yeah. have people below you. Like I have people below me and people above me. And I'm always doing that. Always going to be that. Always. Always going to be that. You know, always, and I, dude. one thing I learned is, and it became like a literal motto. It's like the name of my, my, uh, <laughs> my, my business or whatever is every level, another devil. Like it just, that is, that is, and it just helped me be like, I'm not going to judge anyone. I'm not, I can't like, I have friends who are series regulars and they have their own set of real fucking problems. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't, uh, I try not to judge on any level and we all have our shit, you know? And, um, we all, you know, see someone that's like, Oh my God, that's what I want. And, who knows what they're dealing with, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> it is, man. But I mean, it's, it's like, it, I guess it's just like impressive that you have kind of found yourself in a, in an acting career. And again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that you kind of like appreciate yourself. Like you do roles that like are fucking cool. And like, I don't know if that's just because you like you look a certain way and you get the roles, but I think it has something to do with who you, who you are and like what you represent and your acting ability. Like yeah. it, you don't do a lot of like, cause when I look at my like repertoire of acting jobs, I'm like, ugh, fucking a lot of like procedural cop dramas. Like, I don't give a, I don't like, I'm grateful for this work, but I don't really give a fuck about these jobs, nor would I like be super thrilled. Like, and I know this sounds shitty, because like I would be grateful and I would take it because I would need it at this point if I were to get like a series regular on like some, let's say like fucking Law and Order like you just did, right? And I'm just like on that show. But if I'm on that show for ten years and I can't get off of it and I'm working like ten months a year, it's like cool. Like I'm making money, I can support myself, I can do like I have a different lifestyle. But like creatively, I am stifled and I am not like that's not what I got into this for. No, you got into and, it. For soul yeah. fulfillment and there's no fulfillment. But like, I, yeah, you've, you've done stuff that like, I don't know, like how did, like you, did you do all of this? Did you do all of those things in the beginning and kind of like have the experiences on those shows and kind of be like, okay, cool. Like I, f- I can feel this out. This is okay. Because like when you're starting out, you don't really get to like, just choose no. like that. I want to be on cool you projects. You take whatever you get, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I got to build, I was just all, in the beginning. It was building my resume. And I did say to my first manager, I will do five co-stars and then no more. Yeah. And I was like, and that's something that is just because I know what I'm shooting for. Mm -hmm. And for me, just my personal, uh, you know, decision, that's as many as I'm going to do. And then if that costs me and I don't work for a year, cause we're trying to get move over into guest star world, then so be it. And that's what happened to me. You know, and I was like, I was booking a lot and then a year, a little over a year and didn't get anything. Did you start to, to like have conversations where you were designing the, the avenue for yourself for like what was going to, what you were going to take and what you were not going to take? Or was it like, cause, cause I know if I'm like, Hey, look, I'm not going to do co-star stuff anymore. I'm just going to do guest star. They'll start sending me guest stars, but I'm still just like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, it's a guest star. Like that's like all that I know, like the. The excitement yeah. is in the guest star, not in the role 
And so yeah. like, you're still or feeling like you're go ahead. Procedurals in general, you mean? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah. Like, like, yeah. because you, you're the work you did. I don't know. I'm sure you've done some stuff, like some even bigger stuff, maybe that you have been like, I didn't really love that, but I took it because, you know, it was available to me and I, and I booked it. And so like, yeah. I, I, it would be silly of me not to, mm -hmm. but like the work you, the work you've done is, is rad. Like, and they're, and they're cool gigs. And yeah. so like, but you don't always get to choose that. Like, were there roles that you turned down were th in, in like narrowing right. yourself into the cool stuff? Or like, how did you find yourself it landing in stuff that like you could even be proud of? I mean, just, I don't know if it's like a certain energy applied to an audition that I was excited about over one that I wasn't. Um, I d it wasn't, it, it getting these shows wasn't by design because there is no design, right? Like sure. I can pass on whatever I do. And I was passing on a lot of stuff. I also said like, I don't want to be a series regular on network television because I don't want to be stuck there for seven years and not. And yes, they were like, you'll be a multimillionaire. I was like, <clears throat> it's not why I got into this. Want. Yeah. And, uh, and then then you find a team that respects that and then you're in good hands. But like, I, um, it wasn't by design, man. It's just like, I get the audition. Like, like a like a when I did um, Fear the Walking Dead when I did that audition right I didn't know what that was going to be it just said recurring guest star open ethnicity open gender uh, open like age like oh, the age was like thirties to forties or something and mm -hmm. I was like I don't know what the fuck this is <laughs> right right they give you dummy sides and it was like monologues upon monologues and I was just like all right I mean I'm just gonna you just do whatever you know. Mm -hmm. um, Wow. And that one ended up being one of the main villains of that season, you know, yeah. and like, and what was it that, you know, open, like open gender. I'm like, well, I have a lot of competition here. I have no <laughs> yeah. idea, you know? Right. Um, but that one, I don't know. I just felt like I'm just going to do what I want. Cause I don't know. And then it's, it's, it is this universe that could be fun, you know? Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I didn't choose any of it. It's like when I got so you, so you can't really like quantify what has or hasn't worked for you. You just kind of have like felt it out, like because because uh, I try to think about that sometimes. It's like, okay, these are all the things that I have booked. What what's the pattern inside all of these things? Like, what is what's been and and honestly, there's nothing. There's, there's no literally pattern. nothing. I can spend no. all month thinking about it i'm like nothing is no. similar <laughs> it's like the process of doing all this. chaos bro there's no pattern every tape's different every the energy you apply to every tape is different like i, I there's it's just chaos no rhyme no reason mm -hmm. it's just madness and yeah. uh i stopped looking for patterns or you know structure yeah. <laughs> a long time ago yeah because um, it's That's... just doesn't exist you know yeah but you know you, you you still have to enter every single opportunity from, you know, a similar place. And it's funny because, you know, some things you fall in love with a little bit more mm -hmm. inherently, you're just like, oh man, like, oh, I feel like a pull to this more. So I want to like maybe work harder, but then you're like, why would I be working harder? I'm always working just as hard as I possibly can. Like I think about that way when I'm in acting class or something like that, I'm like, why sometimes my work is better there than it would be if I was just putting myself on tape because I like don't, the stakes aren't as high. Right. And so like I, and I'm like, why can't I enter that? Like my actual audition space from this like calm area of like, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not having the stakes be so high, but ultimately when you're getting an audition, like the stakes don't need to be that high because like we said, there's no formula to any of this stuff. There's no, there's no way to quantify what's going to work. So even if you're like, I am this person, this person is me. It's like, well, who fucking cares? Because it's, it's probably going to go to some fucking black chick. Yeah. You know? like, a lot of other people too. I pro I mean, I've been like, that was a perfect fit for me. And I, and I just didn't, I was like, we didn't hear anything. I was like, that makes no sense. But yeah, um, yeah man, it's, it's, I don't know. It's nice too because you haven't really like fallen into a trap of being like, like you you have such a kind of like ambiguous look already as it is but mm -hmm. like I'm sure you could fall into like you know what a type of something for like the the world to see you as and I don't think you've done that at all. I'm and so glad to hear that cuz I think that uh, someone who understands and watch and understands like film television and 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 what we do, you know, 
but there's a lot of just people who don't and they go, Oh, are you playing criminal? Or are you playing a drug dealer? Or are you playing? And it's like, yes, I've played those things maybe multiple times. And I think that the reason is, is like, listen, I, people see tattoos. Like I have kind of a, you know, sharp face and like, you know, I've been told that I'm like, can be intense and tense features, whatever. And I'm like, so I think that's why that I fall into that type. And like, we have worked against that. Uh, and I've have auditioned for a lot of other parts. Um, for me, even if I'm playing a, someone on the wrong side of the law, like I will always be able to find something different with it always. Um, and, and, uh, I don't, yeah, I feel like I'm ulti- like I on Law and Order. This one I just did. I'm like a blue collar dad, you mm-hmm. know, and like who's I can't say much more. But he's blue blue collar dad, and I know I know about it because I read for yeah, yeah. my friend with it. Oh right, right. But yeah, that's yeah. Like, and that's the first time I've had that happen. I was like, holy shit! Like, yeah, finally got on the other side, you know. Yeah, but and, that's gonna be cool for you, man, because yeah. like, I see that when you when I talk to you personally. Like, yeah. yes, sure, I see like the other side of the law, kind of rugged, sharp, like kind of scary criminal style guy but like that's not like i actually like you're you're so much more dynamic than that and it's like and it shows in your work too because it's it's more nuanced like you're not going on i'm excited to watch the law and order because like the writing is law and order right it's Mm -hmm. like okay cool like there's only so much to work with but like if you're smart and if you're like a thoughtful and honest actor you can like you can create some real nuance with that stuff. And I think that's going to bring out a lot because you've done that in every role that I have ever seen you play. Mm -hmm. And it's not this like a one dimensional, this guy is the bad guy kind of thing. Yeah. It's yeah. You're in every man. you have everything there. And it's like, that's why it's so compelling. And I think that's why you're going to continue to work and continue to just be seen and, and grow and grow and grow. And I think, you know, like you're already kind of like, branding your own self as a, as an actor in the space. Yeah. I think it seems on the outskirts that it's like very intentional and it's like by your design, but you're saying it's kind of like, well, I don't know. I guess it's just like through the work that you're doing. Like you could, that's all you have in your control. Like the work that's that it. you bring to the thing. It's really it. Right. So I think it's, there's certain things I may get that I'm like, I'm perfect. I like, I fit this world. This is so perfectly, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, I guess like knowing that is helpful, I guess, but there's no way to have any control over it. Like you have no, you have such little agency in this business. Like I, I, I don't know how it happens. And I'm, I'm grateful because, you know, I've auditioned for so many like network shows and stuff. And I've only gotten like a few out of however many I've auditioned for. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm so grateful to be a part of these kind of like um, projects with prestige, you know, that's, yeah. that's where I'm like, okay, this, like, I love how my career has unfolded so far, you know, and the parts that I do get, I'm like, cool. This was kind of, I know that like, I'm not right for this kind of tone in a show, like back to network and stuff. Right. No, I'm not. But I know like, you know, when I got Barry, I was like, this is my, I like, I literally said, this is my part. Mm. And I never say that. Like when you got the audition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and because we were waiting, I mean, I love, it was my favorite show. Um, <laughs> so good when it started and I was like, and that's, and it aired in 2020, I think 20, right. 2019, 20, yeah, 2019. Um, I remember seeing it and being like, this is an incredible show. This is like a dream show for me. Mm. And, um, and I would hold out every season. We try and find something. There was like, oh, there's this like co-star. I was like, no, pass. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing it. There's something. There's gonna be something. I'm not doing it. And then we get to the last season, and I see this one, and I'm like, that's it. This is my role. And like, just went into the tape. Uh, a lot of takes for that one because it was one scene, and I was just like, I know this show so well that I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking just fine tune this one instead of just letting it go yeah. and um and it worked and i did got you have job. a lot of material when they sent it to you for orig- like the original casting um 
or was it Maybe. like small like a little amount like how many did you have a bunch of pages to like do an audition with no it was one it was like two pages wow just the scene of me and sally at the diner at the table that's it and um yeah that was all they gave me for that you know and i was like and i just saw him i know this guy i went to school with this guy like yeah and i was like i could tell every other a lot of other actors would probably play him kind of like big and kind of like thuggy and all that stuff. And I was like, nah, he's like a little boy who's trying to be hard. So he's like struggles with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was so fucking good, dude. (laughs) It's so funny. Yeah. So like, and it's my favorite thing I think is, I guess that's also like a thing, like outside of people that you respect uh, paying, paying compliments or whatever is when your family members say, I know I have known you since you were a child yeah. I don't know who that was. I on didn't the recognize that guy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, nice. nailed it. So that's, that was, that was the point. You yeah. Know? So what happens when that, like, do, what happens when that project is over, like the highest, you know, <sighs> esteemed like thing in your heart that you're like, this is fucking my, I'm sure you were just like geeking the fuck out the entire time you were there. Just like, cause it seems like Bill Hader had a cool relationship with you. He was kind of like revering you in a cool way and like had nice things to say about you and just like your work. And it's just gotta be like, this is a fucking dream. Like this is, yeah. a, this is exactly what I wanted to do and I'm fucking doing it. And now I'm fucking here. And then like, guess what? Like the weekend rolls around, you're off set. And like that Monday comes around, you're kind of just like, well, I don't have a job anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's work blues, bro. It's what we do. It's like, it is the ebb and flow. It's the roller coaster of it. It's uh, that's why I'm actively working to find purpose outside of what I do, because I think I haven't had any and didn't, or didn't, I just haven't found it, you know, or, or yeah. having something else. And um, I guess like being of service to other people is something that I'm like really leaning into cool. I mean, by request of my, my therapist. But um, yeah, great man i think it's uh i'm just trying to grow uh and learn and be the best person that i can be outside of all that shit so when i get to stop playing this other person and having that escape when i'm done with the 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 escape plan i can come back and be okay with being me again because i'm Mm -hmm. never it's always like oh fuck i'm back to being me Mm -hmm. and i I usually hate being me you know so it's like i do you know so yeah it's it's uh i'm hearing a lot of you know place value elsewhere Mm -hmm. and don't you know wrap your self-worth up in this stuff and it makes total sense but you know practicing it in theory it like sounds good in theory but you know it's again just like making a movie it's easier said than done so these things are like you know it's a real process to actually try to get to that place you don't just say like hey okay i'm gonna place value out there and then like all of a sudden wake up and your value is over there it's like dude you're so we're so like rooted in this thing and if you're obsessed with it the way that i think you and i both are it's like really hard to disconnect yourself from those roots you know and pull yourself out and 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 sometimes it's just like well like if I do, am I still going to, are they still going to be there when I need them? Like, it's like, Mm -hmm. if I walk away from this too much, like how much is, how much can I even like put value over here? Cause if I don't keep putting value here, like is something going to pass me by? Like you have this whole, or at least I do, man, I can't, I'm not going to project onto you, but like, you know, I have this whole like psychological fucking fuck show in my brain. That's just like, you know, if I take rest or if I, go and like enjoy myself being present in something that is completely off the topic of acting and filmmaking and doing this work. Do I become lazy to that thing? Like, it's just like, no, because I already know I have the work ethic. The work ethic exists. I know I have it for when it needs to come into play. But if something's not happening for me, I don't need to just like put all of my effort into like making something happen right away because there it's like filling a void. Yeah, that's and weird. it's just like, there's relationships in my life that I should be fostering more that like yeah, I'm neglecting right. because of, you know, like my intense need to be this thing. Well, we, as what we do and just, I mean, I think artists, but mo- uh, mostly actors is that 
we have to be a modicum of self-involved and that's tough. You know, that's yeah. tough to be in a relationship. It's tough with friendships and stuff like that. I'm learning that too. And I'm learning a way of uh, being self-involved when it comes to being like in my work shoes, but then like trying to separate from that and not be, and be present and not, you know, just this, this, this thing and this thing and like thinking about work and, you know, it's hard not to, cause it's like, especially when it becomes like your main source of income and all that kind of stuff. It's like, it gets really stressful and like, yeah. um, it's hard, man, but I think it's all art about with commerce. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It becomes, it becomes super hard, man. And you know, I mean, it's cool. Cause you, you still have your music that you kind of can put your energy into. That's a nice creative outlet that you don't like, focus on like the monetary aspect of that in that no, world for yourself not either. the money not the music that i play no fucking yeah. way <laughs> it's a tough market <laughs> yeah i mean well especially like the certain kind of like yeah genre that we play is not a, a money maker by any stretch yeah you yeah know? it's just fun it's just what i love to play um, that's great though man it's great to have that outlet and you know it's it kind is. of kind yeah. of what i'm trying to do here as well you know just like having that other outlet to connect and do something yeah. a little bit different than, you know, the everyday like yeah. grind of like, you know, white knuckling through, Ugh. you know, your fucking experience. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's, yeah. And it's, it's interesting too. Cause like I have the music thing, but like other like dudes in my band tour with their other bands. So they're gone a lot. So we have to wait, you know, there's like months where I'm like, we well, don't have practice and then, they'll be back in like two months and then we'll write more music. And like, so it's just about even that and that's gone. Right. I'm like, yeah. the fuck do I do? Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the only thought is like, okay, I gotta put, I gotta like, now I can write and start writing my script, but it's just like, that's like, it's just like, maybe I can just go like have a picnic with a friend and like, yeah. you know, like go on coffee then, bro that's all i like hit up a friend and let's walk for six miles and drink coffee like that's yeah that helps you know that's also doesn't feel it feels productive and maybe like um uh you know like uh filling your soul with 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 with, you know conversation and thoughts that you uh, with a person that you care about but you could be more productive if you just wrote or did something you know like i uh yeah i struggle with that fear for sure so yeah do you find that having like being in la now is like what's the difference for you you love you lived out here for a while and now you're out there for a while Mm. what do you think was it necessary Um, i don't know if necessary is the word i think i i think it was necessary in the fact that i just needed a change of scenery Mm -hmm. um did 10 years in new york and you know my life changed pretty drastically that last year and I just uh had wanted to move out west for a while mm-hmm. and I love my place um I'm adjusting to it the stereotype of like LA being an isolating place is a very real thing uh that I'm still navigating mm-hmm. um but I do like it here weather I don't know if everybody ever talks about the weather in LA but yeah that's you know <laughs> I mean it helps man yeah, no. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, yeah. I miss New York. It was nice to go to work there for a couple yeah, weeks yeah. last week or whatever. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about, I don't know, I, I've been here for 12 and I'm just like, hmm, you know, the state of the industry just like doesn't really require you to be anywhere at this point. No. So, that's you know, but only- it, it helps to be in an industry town. Yes, that's that's the only thing, right, <laughs> is that I've realized since I moved here. Um, the amount of like people that I've met or parties or events that I've been invited to or anything like that uh, has been, it's the most I've ever done. Like in the two years I've been here, I've done more in that space than I ever did in 10 years of living in New York. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, there's something to be said there. Yeah. It's like, Yeah. You gotta meet people, you know, yeah. and you're, I, I, but I do, but I have friends who live in like Salt Lake city and they work all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I got so. friends all over the place too, that are doing the same. Yeah. Um, dude, I, this is probably going to make you feel weird, but I'm going to do it anyways, because I feel like 
I don't know, man, there's something about you that I kind of felt when I first met you that like, like I'm not, I'm not like, like, I'm not worried about where you're going. And in fact, I actually like, I remember like early on <laughs> because we were going out for the same things, feeling like a sense of envy around you and your name and like, just like your presence. And I was like, he's so fucking cool. He's got this fucking like cool look and fucking, he's like way cooler looking than I am. And fuck me, dude, I'm such a douchebaggy Chad. Oh, and whatever. God. I went down this whole rabbit hole with myself, but like, now I look at you and like have none of that comparison whatsoever and just like really see you as like you, the artist and you, the person for what I know. And I, I have this like really interesting, like feeling that you are going to like go like be breakthrough in a fucking like really really crazy way man like the magnitude of like your artistry is going to expand beyond i think even what you are prepared for and are capable of doing and like i know you don't want fame and that's not something that like you hope to have in your life but i am like i think it, this is just me speaking but like i think maybe you should start like preparing yourself for it because mm -hmm. like thinking about what that's going to look like because i truly believe um and i'm not i don't i'm not just blowing smoke man i have no reason to do that um sure. like i really believe from watching your work and from seeing your performances and from kind of just like being in like somewhat of your orbit through social medias or whatever whatever i've been um there's like something about you man that like your your aura kind of like has this this like vibrancy to it that is that is like moving at this at this pace and go and going towards like a light that I am like I can see more for you than I can even see for like myself or for other people in my world and it's powerful man and I think your like your art is potent and your abilities and your craft and like what you represent is like really really powerful man so like just make sure that you like take care of yourself through this process i know you already are like i don't need to be the one to tell you but i really think that like big things are coming your way and like i don't know how somebody prepares for that shit i don't know yeah. like what you do but you know get ready man buckle your fucking seat belt and like just uh you know, keep being good to yourself and to and being in service of others, man. I think like everything you're already doing is right. Like I don't have any advice for you, obviously, no. but like I just wanted to say that because like I admire you, man, a lot. And I really like I see you going through what you go through and I'm like I feel your like pain and your joy at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it feels like I'm connected to you in a way that I'm like, man, like I almost like want you to do like better than me because I already, because I know you're on something different than me. And so like, it's not a it's like it, it's the first time I've ever felt like detached from like, you know, you always, you always like say, Oh yeah. Like I want people to succeed. I want people to succeed, but like, yeah. I don't want you to succeed. Like I know you're going to, I know you are already succeeding, yeah. but I know you are going to succeed beyond like this place. And it's going to be fucking crazy. So I just really buckle up motherfucker. <laughs> I really appreciate that, Julian. It's really like, you know, I, yeah, I'm. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, take, take, I'm sure taking that uh, in is hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, it means a lot. Truly, it means a lot. Um, and uh, again, like, that's just like sitting here and being like, I, you know, this past week has been hard. I have things that I'm dealing with, like we all do. But to hear that um, from you, uh, yeah, man, it, it like, thank you, you know, yeah, and, of course, um, man. I, you know, yeah, man, I mean, I, I feel it's a weird thing where like, I can feel it in my gut going, yes, I feel like that is where I'm going to, but my mouth just says, I hope so, <laughs> you, you know, have like, to, man, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. What else can you do? You know? Yeah, no, for like, sure. Until it starts happening. It's and you probably when you're in it, you're not even gonna really realize that you're in it because you're just gonna yeah. be in it. Yeah. You know, you already are in it. 
you know, you're, you're in the thing that you're in right now. And it's hard yeah. to have perspective on that when you're in it. And so, you know, 10 years, 10 years down the road, it's going to be a much different conversation. And, um, yeah. yeah, I'm just excited to see, uh, you know, the growth of you and to kind of like ask you about similar things, you know, like how do you navigate that space and like, yeah. what's that like? Yeah, yeah, um, that's... because, you know, I think, I think you've been chipping away at it for a long time and, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I think it's really cool. I think, I think you're doing, I think you're doing it like the right way. Thank and you. I hope it feels as right as it looks. It doesn't, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> no, it's not, I don't think it ever will, bro. It's a, it's a thing where you're, it's never good enough. I tap myself on the shoulder for five minutes and I was joking about this with my manager at one point where I was like, Hey, I'm the guy that like, you'll tell me that I booked the job and I'll be like, that's fuck. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm. And then I'll be like in the same breath, I will ask, Hey, did we ever hear back from that office though about this? Mm. Tape? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It will never be enough. And that's my own journey. That's my own shit to work on. Yeah. Um, but like, dude, it means a lot. And I, I love that. Uh, you reached out to me because I remember this now you reached out to me and uh, on Instagram, we met for coffee and stuff. And, and I took that, um, it was kind of an impetus for me when we met, I realized from meeting you that, um, it's better for me and I'm better about like, uh, you know, being envious and all that stuff. Cause I don't like to bring that energy in. But at that time I remember being like, this is how you do it with someone who's like your audition nemesis or whatever you want to call it. Right. And I'm like, for me, I realized meeting them makes me as long as they're not a total piece of shit. Right. Makes me be like, Oh, I'm rooting for them now. Yeah. You know? this is disarming. And, like, and this is the, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. So like when I met you, I was like rooting for Julian. And then like, yeah. I've since met like my three other, I've met three of my biggest audition nemesis in the last like five years, four years. And, uh, and they're all they're really cool. Just rad. Yeah. 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 I'm just like, yo, yeah. Props. You know, like I'm here, I'm in your corner. Like the interesting thing is that you guys will, you know, everybody will see each other at the top in some capacity. And then you'll just be like, Oh yeah. I remember like we used to fucking like yeah, get so insecure course. about like where we were here. And like, now you're going to be like making movies with each other eventually, you know, it's like, <laughs> Oh shit, dude. Remember that? time that one time ago <laughs> i think about that too like you don't know where you're gonna end up it's, it's just yeah man i uh yeah it's yeah. i just i do appreciate the kind words like immensely. absolutely I man it. yeah i appreciate your work i appreciate what you're doing man i uh i'm i'm i really admire the the stuff you're doing man and i'm you know especially appreciate you taking the time to come and talk here it's it's cool yeah. man and i think you know ultimately i'm i'm selfishly doing this but i'm also like i think it's in service of others as well because mm -hmm. a lot of people can get something out of these conversations that are like yeah. stuck in their own way and they're totally. feeling like i'm the only one that feels this it's just like no dude we all do you know yeah. we all, all every single one of us man like, and you keep and it keeps happening the farther along you go so oh. yeah man i mean ultimately i just want i just want you to like really try to keep taking care of yourself as best as you can because you got a f fucking roller coaster coming up man and it's gonna yeah. be a wild ride fun as shit i'm sure it's gonna yeah. be really cool it'll be fun when you see be sam rockwell when you start working with sam rockwell man clap hands for me and fucking yeah. let him know dude that that story is amazing oh i will um, tell him that for sure i'm sure i'm yeah, sure no, you'll be there man I will. I, you're, yeah. you're you're you are on the path to being the next sam rockwell in your own regard so take that in and believe that however you want to and uh go fuck yourself <laughs> yeah that's fair i yeah thank you man I've, yeah of yeah. course man Just, i appreciate you being on the pod man this was cool uh yeah let's Thanks, uh oh. let's be friends more. Yeah, we are friends. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Let's <laughs> just, uh, I'll, I'm going to try to come out to LA and uh, do some, uh, my like creative partners out there. And I ha okay. like half the people that have been on this pod are from there. And so they're all just like, maybe it's time, Hang dude. Out. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe it's, it's time, time to just make the move. Yeah. So just... nothing's nothing's off the table, but uh, I'll, I'll always ensure to reach out to you, man, and, 
and yeah. uh, holler and keep you posted, man. And yeah, just sending yeah. you love, man. Sending you good energy for for all the things that that you got coming, man. It's uh, you got a lot of a lot of wonderful things happening in the world. So keep Thank putting you. it out. Keep doing Send good work. Back. Sending it back to you too. So thanks, brother. Yeah, man. All right, man. Appreciate you. We'll talk all soon, right. okay? All right, man. All right, peace. There it is, guys. Spencer Grenice. What a guy, am I right? Yeah, I love that episode. I think he is such a unique person with uh, an incredibly thoughtful and profound kind of outlook on this business and how he's entering it. And I I have full faith that he is going to uh, succeed beyond his wildest dreams. And I'm super excited for him to do that. So yeah, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning into the episode. If you haven't already done so, subscribe, please, to the YouTube channel. Follow on the platform where you're listening to this podcast if you're doing it the audio way. Um, Share us on the social medias. Talk about us with your friends. Write a review. Uh, wherever you can do that, you know, I know all of that stuff happens in places and I'm seeing some people doing that. And I'm very grateful to everybody who has been uh, making that happen. It, it is, it is seen and I, it is appreciated. And so um, bless your heart very much. We also now have a Patreon page that I am still getting to. I haven't yet like started really promoting it outside of just talking about it here but i'm going to start making videos i'm going to start adding um new creative like fun exclusive content there where you can go on and you can check out all of this new fun stuff you can suggest what you want out of me i'm going to be doing some like workshops on getting started as an actor what you needed to look for and you know uh headshots and agents and managers and uh, how to approach an audition and then how to you know workshops on on making a film what it takes to uh fundraise and finance and 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 location scout all of those things every single detail that goes into that stuff as well as you know puppet shows and wrap offs and sing alongs and just funny like q and a's with my girlfriend Rachel We have a lot of things in store that we're going to be putting up there. And I really want you to be a part of that community with me. So go check it out at the Precipice of Delusion. Sorry, that's wrong. It's called patreon.com slash the Precipice of Delusion. Uh, There are uh, subscription program packages for as little as $1 a month. You pay $1 and you'll get in. You will be somebody that's featured every single week uh, on on these podcasts. You will be somebody that I will be shouting out and saying your names and telling the world how radical you are because I love you so much. In fact, it's what I'm trying to do at this very moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there are tiers. There's like $1, $5, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and I'm going to be making sure that you guys get serviced in there and get all sorts of good stuff coming from me. So, uh, I got a shout out right now. My good man, Jeremy Church. Love you, brother. Joe Chamas. Thank you for being here, my man. Stacy Walker. God, I love you. Scott Scrivener. What a ledge. Love you guys so much. And Melissa Kennedy. I owe you my life, my friends. Thank you for supporting me so far uh, without even me really promoting this thing yet. So uh, I really appreciate you being a little part of this community and uh, having my back. I love doing this podcast and I want to grow it out and be able to do it in person with people. But I need a studio. I need new cameras. I need new gear. Stuff all costs money. And so, um, yeah, I just I need your help if you are willing. So put it up and I promise you that I'm going to reciprocate and I'm going to make it worth your while. So, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for being here. As always, it's a pleasure to have you and I will see you next week. All right. Bye bye, muchachos.
what I'm talking about.